So Eric Lattice, uh, full disclosure, I was a Caterpillar, dinking around with some IR vision stuff, um, having some problems, and Eric came down to Tech Center and helped me out a couple times. Um, so it's been a long time I've known Eric. Uh, he's been a really frank, <laughs> answering lots of questions over email over the years. Um, so thank you, um, Eric, for agreeing to come. Um, obviously, we're very excited about the ROS2 tools that you have available out there. Um, and looking forward to kind of um, what you're able to share today. So thanks for coming. And uh, Eric Lattice, uh, Fanning. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, so my quick story about Mr. Robinson, because uh, I love this one, right? So this is in the early days of like Industry 4.0. And uh, so I come down to help him, like he said, on some IR vision stuff. We're also connecting some uh, data collection system. And uh, he's like, yeah, we're going to collect all the sensor data and, and, and the, you know, the weld speeds. And all. we're going to collect all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. What are you going to do with it? He goes, I have no idea. <laughs> so excited. Um, by the way, that is still the thing people are trying to figure out what exactly to do with all that data. Um, anyway. So hi, uh, thank you for inviting me here uh, to talk about our driver. I uh, want to just give a real basic inter uh, introduction to it. Uh, first, just a little bit about me. So I've been doing industrial automation basically since out of college, uh, so in my entire career. I've been at FANUC for 26 and a half years, I think now. Um, I did start out in our Midwest office, which is uh, how I ran into Caterpillar because they were in our territory. So I, I helped them from an a integrator development standard. For about 10 years, my whole job was to go out and help people understand how to use IR vision or force sensing or whatever else all the things that I've forgotten in my last five years, um, where now what I, I do is product management for our controller software. So that can be pretty much any of the generic controller software, but it also gets in heavily into like the motion, uh, or like our remote motion control products, and then also Ross falls into that category. Um, so that's, that's just a very, very brief uh, introduction to me. Okay, so the FANUC Ross package. So we've actually, this package has actually been available in its current form uh, for just over a year. We released it about a year ago. Um, the number of robots that it has supported uh, has grown over that time. I think we're probably on the fourth or so release uh, of the driver itself. And so basically what it does, it, it is pretty straightforward. We can take a follow joint trajectory from Move It, and we can bring that in and it'll send the commands over to uh, the robot over um, the communications there. So. Uh, it also allows for some the status of the robot, joint angles, that sort of thing, and also allow you to change payload and control some I.O. So you have a, a, a reasonable interface there between a ROS client and uh, the robot. Uh, it's available in R30AB Plus and also on R50 uh, when, when we actually do start selling R50s to everyone, but those are both supported. And on the uh, PC side, it's uh, Humble Jammy is, our, is the setup that we're currently in. Uh, so... So just a little bit more detail about it. Uh, there are, are a couple of packages that when you install it, the packages will uh, allow you access into. So one of them is the FANUC interface node uh, that gives you the joint position and the rotis, uh, robot feedback uh, for uh, you know, running and faulted, these sorts of things. And then the, uh, that interface also provides the ability to control the digital idea, like I said. So these are, these are some of the actions, topics, and services that are uh, available. Uh, this, this, actually, this actually comes out of the manual, which is available inside of the package. So it's all documented uh, in there. Uh, so the client software itself, the driver contains a manual and all the install files. It also contains, when we say that we have support for a robot in ROS2, what that means to us is we will have the description file set and we'll also have move it to configurations. Uh, so that's, and, and the so I think this is uh, what 45 robots there uh, over the two platforms, either R30AB plus or R50 that are supported. And we do add models periodically by customer request. Uh, takes a little bit of time to turn those around, but if someone wants something that's not on the list, then we make the request in and, and, it, and we can have it added. Um, and it's a pretty good flow. It, I, there's not really a particular cadence for the releases that we do on the driver. It really just comes down to uh, what, what the customer requests are out there. Uh, so this, these are just little cheesy videos. I'm just showing that I actually made it work. So a almost non-programmer now that I am, uh, I was able to set this up. I'm running uh, actually a virtual machine with Linux and uh, RoboGuide and Windows native, and I was able to make that connection and, and uh, send joint trajectories from, manually, essentially here, from uh, Move It to, uh, to RoboGuide. Uh, it does work in both virtual and real. There's no real difference between the two as far as how those communications work. 
Did that play, by the way? I couldn't quite tell if that was actually playing. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so now this one uh, is actually a little bit more advanced uh, format or a, a example. This was something one of the uh, application engineers in our group uh, put together. So he basically uh, expanded the, the URDF and put in some obstacles and then uh, used move it to generate a path to move a part from point A to point B. And so he had just made a, a little um, a little video of what he did. And essentially it's the same thing. He's using, in, in this case, I don't, I don't recall if he's using, um, if that's RoboGuide in the same PC. In my case, it was PC to PC. Everything was running on one computer. In this case, I think he may have actually had uh, the uh, RoboGuide running on a completely separate computer than his client. Uh, but it's just a little more advanced example of where he actually wrote the code to, to make it do like a real thing instead of just the manual uh, you know, sort of exercise of it. So a couple things to get started. Uh, so to, to get a copy of the driver, right now we do keep it on my portal, which is the kind of the customer portal for FANUC. Um, so the two, two ways to get it is the long road, which is you can, if you know who your FANUC account manager is, you can talk to them and get set up and get the thing. Or if you email me, uh, I can also arrange to get that driver sent to you if you'd like to try it out. Um, and just to note there too that uh, ROS2 is compatible with RoboGuide. So a lot of the testing we do is in RoboGuide because you don't have to walk down to the lab. It's a very convenient thing to do. I'm going to be really quick. Okay, so what's next? All right. Uh, so first, quick note about R50 small commercial. Um, the R50 controller is our new hardware platform that's come out. You can see here the mini, the A cabinet, and the B cabinet styles. Uh, of the controller. We have, th these controllers have a four to eight, depending on tuning and things, uh, higher command frequency than our previous platform. So we're really looking forward to that. That's actually a, a, a big enabler in this area. Um, all the ports are giggy also, all the ethernet's giggy. So now we don't have that limitation. There's a lot more horsepower. The, the controller itself is actually a lot faster. I don't know the exact specification, but the controller itself is faster. So we have a lot more capability on this controller. Uh, we also have onboard Python execution. I mean, how many people have programmed Carol? How many people still like to program Carol? Okay. <laughs> anyway, it, the, Python is not really expected. It's not intended per se to be a Carol replacement, but in the testing and things I've done, it can take the place of a lot of those things. So if you already know Python, you're not going to necessarily have to learn Carol to do a lot of the things that we do with Carol currently. So that's a really big, uh, big benefit for, for us. Uh, and then, of course, the I.O. times are uh, faster, the execution time. So we, there's a lot more capability built into this. Not, not to mention, the, one of the other big things I put out is all the cybersecurity. These are all, uh, um, they have the certification. And don't ask me, the IEC 6420, uh, something. All right. Um, anyhow, we're really excited about this because it's going to give us some capabilities that we didn't have in our previous platform that are really going to enable us to do better in this space. So... And then our future direction is we are currently working on a ROS2 control driver. We are targeting a release of that for August right now. And we are also committed to developing any kind of hardware interfaces and controllers that we need to meet everyone's uh, needs out there in the industry. So it's really something that's, uh, you know, we're finally on board with all of the ROS development. And uh, so that's, that's kind of where we're at with things now. Um, I... Are we, how much time do I have? <laughs> and then you have uh, 20 minutes, minutes right? about 20 minutes. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. that's my entire presentation. So um, I uh, short and sweet, I suppose. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. I okay. Have no, no, well, no, no, wait, wait, wait. I, I'm very, when I do presentations, it's very clear to me. It's always the people in the room get first dips because they made the effort to get here. Anybody? Yes, yes sir. Uh, from intrinsic. <laughs> Based off this presentation, I'm curious if this improved driver is also going to be, is, is going to be open source and get people. Uh, the other questions in the room was uh, how available via open source pathways uh, would the future driver be? So we are investigating what that might look like for us. Um, so it's on the table. Oh, yeah, yeah, there will, there will be some under, we, that's, that's actually a really good, really good point. So the question was about the packages that would be uh, required on the robot side. We'll have to put together some sort of option to, to order. We, we actually haven't gotten to that point yet. But yeah, it'll, whatever we need that will, be, that will support the driver will be a, an option that you can buy. Yeah, and that's actually some of the day, right? You can take a handful of options to kind of do this sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I breezed through that. But there's, there's an option, uh, S568, called ROS2 package that has all of the underlying components that you need in one. 
And then, yes, in the back half. Gosh. Two questions. Um, so, yeah, the one that's already released to our DFs and description packages there, is that ever inside of that, inside of the actual code, will those description packages go to the Ross Industrial Manager repo, or are you going to have to figure out repo? We're trying to figure that out. So th none of that's really been decided. That they those are included in that driver, and since you can have access to the driver, they're all there. But, but yeah, we're we're still looking that up. The question was about future availability of description packages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the second one is, um, are you guys planning to uh, make this like a streaming interface? So uh, the question was, are we looking to re uh, 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 release a streaming interface? So the ROS two control driver will take advantage of uh, subsampling. Yeah. So the control, okay, so the question was, what is the expected uh, command rate of the uh, control? It is going to be, it will be dependent on the, con the model of the robot, and it will also be dependent on, so the tuning of the robot, but we're looking at 500 to 1,000. That's hers, 500 Correct, times. that's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what about this Linux based uh, Fanning C dependent controllers? Is that in the pipeline for people that just want really quick testing of the ROS2 scripts? I know you mentioned RoboGuy, but really everybody needs all the bells and whistles. Uh, oh, yeah, you're, you're talking. Okay, so the question, and I'll rephrase and make sure I got this right. You're asking uh, about having a Linux based virtual robot. Yeah, just to make sure all your communication is right, you know, all the setup procedures out to a physical robot. Yep, and we are investigating that part of things as well. Yes, that's correct. We're looking into that. So the question is, uh, how do we look at uh, contributions from the open source community on, on our driver? So uh, this is a very new uh, field for us, obviously. And so we are trying to figure out what we're going to do with, with all of that. Uh, we, we, you know, conceptually like the idea of being able to leverage that as well. And, uh, but we have to figure out some of the details of how that might work. Excellent. I'm going to grab one of the online ones. Uh, it's from Heish. Hey, Heish. Thank you for your presentation. Um, he's followed the development with great interest. He was asking if you could maybe say something about whether you've investigated the existing accepting practices slash conventions around naming of robots, packages, and services. The ROS1 driver has been around. Aligning with existing conventions could improve your customer's migration experience significantly. Follow up to that, can you say anything about the naming of the services? They seem similar to other industrial robot drivers that are out there. Okay, so that was a, I'm glad you said the question. I'll repeat it. Um, Okay, so to break that down, um, yeah, I would be very interested in trying to uh, have uh, some common naming practices. I'm not sure that we're aware of what all those are, so uh, I'd really be, would be open to a conversation with, uh, with you, Heish. Um, uh, that would be actually great. I'd welcome that. And uh, as far as, um, you know, just in general, yeah, we, we would like to make it, I mean, that's the whole point is to make it easy for people to use. So uh, yeah, I would be very open to that conversation. Uh, if I want to see another hand, okay. Another one, does the driver use RMI control motion remotely? Right, it's currently it is RMI. Oh, uh, correct, that is correct. Yes. Yep. And then he said, that was a question, but the answer is yes. <clears throat> Can you say anything about how the ROS2 driver maps joint trajectories to TP motion primitives slash commands? Uh, are you, oh, in the, in the current one? Um, okay, so essentially, I, I don't know the specific detail of that, uh, but my expectation is the way the way it went in the experience I have seen with it is it's going to take those waypoints and turn them into uh, it's all joint motion in joint space is what it does it converts them into that uh, I don't I believe they're all uh, for those of you who speak fanic you know CNT 100 I believe is what they use and then they do uh, they, there's a little bit of speed scaling depending on how long like it'll take a look and see uh, what speed it thinks it'll actually match at that point so there's a little bit of stuff going on there but generally it's going to take that those waypoints and convert them into uh, joint motion instructions. Okay. Correct. That's right. Thanks. Yep. All right. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Eric.